Hey there guys, welcome back for another Warhammer 40,000 Imperium painting video. This week, painting the Primaris Aggressors from issue 6. So, I've gone ahead and primed the model with Chaos Black, and then gone and painted a very thin layer of Abaddon Black all over, just to uh, give it a, a mute colour. And I'm now dry brushing Caliban Green over the model. Now what I'm doing is a little bit more of a heavy dry brush. As you can see, the, the paint's going on quite heavily. It's not just uh, you know dusting it. Um, the idea of this is that I actually want the model to be green with the black left in the areas where this large dry brush can't reach. And what this is going to do is give a bit of a blend between the shadow areas and the brighter areas of the armor. Following on from that, I'm now using a two to one mix of Warpstone Glow and the Caliban Green. So that's two parts of the Warpstone Glow, one part Caliban Green mixed together. And again, with the dry brush, wiping off most of the excess now, I'm not wanting to do uh, so much of a heavy dry brush as I did with the Caliban. I'm just looking to pick up the sort of the outside areas, anywhere where um, that is exposed to light. Um, and build it up a little bit um, a little bit brighter than I want to go as I'm going to darken it down slightly uh, with the next step so all this is is to give us that slightly brighter green on the outer sides and the uh, the front of the armor leaving some of that Caliban green in the recesses and sort of the shadow areas and then that will obviously fade around to the the black of the uh, the under areas Okay, so once that dry brushing is done, it can tend to leave a little bit of a powdery effect um, on some of the model. So all I'm doing is using some Methonian Camo Shade here, not only to um, shade in the recesses, but it will also blend in the, um, the dry brush into the previous layers and give a more uniform blend or a, a smoother blend from the black to the green and also it will sort of dulled down that um, warpstone glow mix a little bit. So this I'm doing a, a good wash all over it and just making sure that it's not pooling on any of the flat surfaces but it is getting into the recesses and uh, a little bit of pooling in, in those joins and where edges meet. Um, but for the rest of the surface I just want more a little bit more of a glaze there and then shading the rest. And then I'll leave that for about 15 minutes to fully dry, and uh, then we'll come back for the next step. Okay, so once the Athonian camo shade has dried, I've now added some more Warpstone Glow to the two to one mix. Um, this isn't quite pure Warpstone Glow, but it's a four to one mix, so um, it's, sort of a little bit brighter now and all I'm doing with this is just looking to get those upper edges um, with a stippling motion here um, where the light is going to hit and then I'll remove more of the um, the paint once there's less paint on the bristles I'll then do this uh, sort of dry brush just to pick off some of those more raised edges. Okay, so next up is probably the most time-consuming part of this whole uh, paint job, and that is edge highlighting every edge with the uh, the mix that we were just using for dry brush. Now, because we're edge highlighting it with a brush, it's going to go on a little bit more concentrated than what the dry brush did, and so although it's the same mix, it will be a little bit brighter than uh, the dry brushed areas, which is why it's great for using as a subtle edge highlight on everywhere including in those shadow areas okay and finally I'm using a two to one mix of warpstone glow and moot green so that's two parts warpstone one part moot green just to get a, a nice vibrant green for an edge highlight now this is on the outer edges um, only and anywhere where the light is obviously going to hit um, so yeah just the sort of the sharpest upper and outermost edges nothing on the 
inner arms or the shadow areas. Okay, so with the green of the armor now finished, I'm taking some lead belcher and applying it to all of the pipe work um, behind his legs and attached to his weapon here. Now obviously these are segmented pipes, so I'm just catching the raised part and leaving the recess between each one um, with that dark shade, um, just so obviously so we get a natural uh, shadow in there. If you do find that you go into them, then uh, a wash of non oil should fix that up anyway, um, or just thin, um, thin down Abaddon black and paint it into those recesses and then just uh, do a bit more touch up on the lead belcher. Um, this will also be applied to the um, the igniter part of his gauntlets. For the actual flamer part with the holes in it, um, I'll be doing something a little different with that. And it will also be the, um, the vent part of his backpack, the upper portion that has the little uh, vented grill in there. Uh, that will be this as well and then obviously the pipes behind his legs. Okay, so I'm now painting the skulls and the aquilia um, on his chest in Xandri dust, as these are going to have a more bone type color. And obviously the reason I'm doing the, uh, the bone before is the, or before the, uh, the red rope that's around the aquilia is obviously to be able to get in there without getting any bone on that rope um, once the red is on there. Always start with the deeper area and come sort of through the model or up the model um, in colours. That way you're not trying to get a, a colour down into a small area um, with paint already on the surrounding area. So obviously just doing the bones in the, uh, the little thing that he's got on his pouch there and I'll also do the um, the purity seal with this as well. So next up I'll apply Mephiston red to all of the obviously the areas that will be red. Um, this will be the any cordage um, such as around his waist and across his chest as well as the purity seal and also the lenses on his uh, helmet. Okay, so now following on from that, I'm using some Retributor armor to paint all of the gold areas, such as the key and um, emblem, whatever this thing is, <laughs> dangles from his waist. Um, also his little symbol on his chest, uh, representing that he's a sergeant, I believe it is, that shows that he was or is a member of... Uh, the Inner Circle was a member of First Company, I believe. I think it's called a Crux Terminatus. Um, so yeah, any anywhere that's going to have gold. Obviously, he's a sergeant, so the, uh, the shoulder pauldron here will have a gold emblem. Um, sometimes people will do the gold on the chest one as well, but for my green wing, I like them to have the uh, the bone. And now for the fun part, yellow. So obviously we all know how horrible yellow is to paint. For this, I'm using Uriel yellow, and it's just a case of applying layer upon layer upon layer until you get it to a bright enough yellow uh, that it looks something like the Uriel yellow on the, uh, the palette. And the reason I'm doing this on these flame parts is I like my Dark Angels to have the Hazard Stripe um, Chainswords. But the flamer part of these gauntlets is way too small to fit that in. So to keep it in theme, I'm having these have a red to yellow fade on this part. And that will the yellow part of that will obviously keep it in theme with what the Chainswords would be coloured. 
So uh, yeah, first of all, uh, all over coat of Uriel Yellow, we'll kickstart this off. Okay, so once we have a colour that looks something like yellow, I'm now taking some very, very thin down Mephiston Red and using it as a glaze um, to fade from the yellow to a red, as you can see, uh, yellow towards the outer edge, fading down to the red, of red as it becomes part of the gauntlet. Um, should only take one or two thin layers of this. If it goes on a little bit too thick, then quickly add a little bit more water to your brush and thin down the, uh, the edge. What you want it to do is try and get a nice smooth blend between the, uh, the yellow and the red there. And then with any successive layers, start a little bit further back each time so that you don't get that harsh join. If you do still end up with a harsh, you know, bit of a heavy line there, then you can do as I did and just mix in a small amount of yellow or go back over that blend whilst they're both still wet or whilst the red is still wet and just do a little bit of on the model blending with the uh, Uriel yellow. All right, so once that's done, I can now move on to the shading. The reason I haven't used the shading each time I finished an area and then finished that section to completion is because I wanted to try and use all my shades at the same time so that they would all have the same drying time. Um, for example, the Aquilia here is getting a coat of Reichland Flesh Shade as will the, um, the other bone colored areas. But if I had done this earlier before doing the reds, I would have to wait for this to dry, then go in and finish with highlights and stuff on those bone areas. Then do, for example, the red areas, then come back and apply the Reckland Flesh Shade that I'm now applying, and then highlight those after it has dried. This way, by getting the base colors down, I can put the Reckland Flesh Shade over the those areas and uh, then come back and highlight each individual area. So it depends on whether, whether you want to sacrifice time for efficiency or vice versa. You could, like I say, paint an area, apply a shade, finish that area with highlights, then move on to the next area, paint that, apply a shade and finish with highlights. Or you can get all the base colors down, apply all your shades as long as they're not gonna be touching and then go back over highlighting each of the areas. So the next two shades that I'll be using will be Seraphine Sapia just for the purity seal here and then some Agrax Earth shade over the gold and obviously this is at the same time that I've done the uh, the Reikland Flesh shade so all my shades are done in at once and then I can leave it for 20 minutes for all of them to fully dry and then come back to the highlighting stages. All right, so first up will be some highlighting of all of the bone areas, and this will be with uh, Ushapti bone. So obviously this is going over the majority of the highlights, but leaving that um, those shaded recesses and a little bit of the uh, the shaded on the sort of the individual feathers. And then the same with the uh, the skull on his wrist and his knee. Uh, this will just be sort of the majority of the the skulls with the sockets and some of those sort of in-depth areas. Um, we'll leave a little bit of the shading. I will then use some screaming skull to do some very fine edge highlighting, um, just on the more sunlit areas of the bone. Um, I'll also use this mixed with a little bit of the Ashapti bone um, to edge highlight the purity seal. And then moving on to the reds, I'm just using some Evil Sun's Scarlet and pretty much doing dots along the rope. Um, the aim is to try and dot each of the raised areas but I'm not going to get it that perfect so as long as I can get the dots separated then you'll see that darker red between them and it will still give the impression of um, you know highlighted rope 
and also I'll edge highlight the uh, the purity seal and any other red areas. I'll then run this into the eye lenses um, just on the front portion um, so the front sort of two-thirds of the eye lens leaving the back of the eye lens just a little bit darker. And for the final level of highlights I'm just using a two-part uh, moot green to one part warpstone glow for a very fine edge highlight um, that isn't too large it's only on the uppermost areas where the light is going to pick and I usually leave this to corners or the curve sort of the apex of a curve on curved edges um, so that as you can see here we've got this curve as it goes from that slightly flat front and then uh, just yeah you can see it's just where the light you would have that sort of light beam that goes down um, objects also on sort of ball or spherical shaped areas I'll just do a small um, dot of green on there and then touch it with my finger and what that will do is pick up some of the paint but leave a little bit of a fingerprint look in there um, and it just leaves a sort of a dotted look or a dispersed look to the uh, the highlight on those domed areas. I'll only do that on spot highlights, um, not anywhere else. But yeah, once this is done, that will be the model done. All that's left after that is to add any weathering or, um, you know, effects, scratches and things like that that you want. Um, so I'll get on with those pieces. I'm not going to bore you with those. I've shown them in a few videos before, but we'll come back and have a look at the finished model. And there he is, one fully painted and dirtied up Primaris Aggressor. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I hope it does help some of you um, with painting your models, if you are doing them for Dark Angels. Um, obviously, I haven't put the, um, the emblem on him yet for his uh, shoulder guard. I have painted the company um, symbol on his knee. He is part of my third company which is what I've decided to do all of my Imperium models um, will be from third company so yeah hope you guys have enjoyed the video if you have hit that thumbs up button if you would like to subscribe to the channel hit that subscribe button and if you ding that bell you'll get notifications of when new videos go live the Imperium series is every Wednesday do check out my other videos um, I've got the weekly issue um, review as well as the playthrough uh, featuring this guy and his um, his two battle brothers if you have recently subscribed then a huge warm welcome to the inner circle to you thank you for your support but until next time guys that is all for now take it easy and keep painting those minis